How are you, sir? It's five o'clock somewhere. You know it, man. You know it. I know it. Hey, it's five o'clock right now. <laughs> you didn't have to work today, did you? I work every day, man. Uh, I don't, I'm a business owner, so there ain't no off. See, you know what? And you can hear that in your music, how dedicated you are to the songs. That means that's how loyal you are to the everyday business world. Sure. For sure. I, mean, wow. I do it every day. This has got to be a big week for you because, I mean, my God, the, the album is out and, and you are just promoting the bejeebus out of it. Well, you know, you about got to anymore. I mean, if you're not, and, and on top of that, if, if I don't like it, you know, I don't show I don't like it, how's anybody else supposed to believe me? Right. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, man, it's, I'm trying to do all we can with this one and just get the word out and some things are working out to where they're kind of working together for promotion you know so it's been good you know one of the greatest things that 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 i find fascinating with you is the fact that you are using modern day tools because so many times the rock musicians or any kind of musician will send me uh like an mp3 but you sent me to a spotify channel and it's like oh he's doing it right he knows exactly where his audience is for sure yeah um you know you can you can find it anywhere but uh try to stay up to date with the industry for the most part you know i mean um we still have our normal ways of getting stuff out to our fans that's been there since day one but if um you know if you're not up to times with what's going on you kind of not relevant to what's today so that's kind of big and important to us so yeah because even as a mobile entertainer i mean when, when we get together with brides and grooms or other parties and stuff like that they send me their spotify lists it's it's not about okay this is what i heard on the radio this is what i like this is what i enjoy sure absolutely that's 100 percent. and and i know exactly what you're talking about i've done a couple of those i'm not a dj but i have definitely been in those shoes playing at event, events like that and you know, maybe they didn't have one, and they're like, "Can you play these songs?" So we didn't hire somebody. <laughs> so I feel it, man. I know it. I know what you mean. <laughs> Do you find yourself though going in and looking at the analytics of different songs that people are listening to? Oh, absolutely. Especially if we have anywhere I can look at a like listeners, uh, most definitely. That's that's huge. Just that's just you know, really, that's where you can kind of pinpoint your marketing, right? You know, right. when you're trying to trying to see where you want to spend money marketing for promotion and type stuff like that it's 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 almost made you the ceo of me incorporated because i mean before this even started happening with music i mean you you relied on on record companies to take care of you oh absolutely yeah Yeah, it's definitely changed the game i mean 100 percent. especially when i came into it again you know the industry was totally different than it is now and um you know labels are not obsolete they're definitely not but you can do more without them to get you yourself you know whether you're searching for a level or not but you can get yourself to the next level whether that's going to be the next level of your career where you want it or if you want to elevate and take things past that and get bigger and that's where especially nowadays you know a lot of labels are coming in they want artists to come in developed you know already kind of doing their thing yeah and you better have those hits on the internet as well because if you don't you're not coming on my team for sure. Yeah, they definitely want you out working. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> they, they do. And they, they, they want those numbers. They, they want to make sure that you've yep. got a connection to those fans. For sure. Yep. 100% do. Yeah, it's changed a lot. I, th- I think that, uh, you know, it, with us, I, I've always, you know, the, the, the end dream for anybody is as big as you can get. Um, you know, and the more and more I get into it, I'm just like, you know, that's per- the the end dream obviously is a huge record deal and be as big as you want but at the same time you can do this independent if you want and, and control how fast you grow right you know because at this point in my life i'm also a business owner so i have to be careful about you know jumping on the road you know i have to plan everything out but but you did the you did it in the way that you're supposed to do it where your dad would say sure. you better have a, you better have a net man go do what you want to yeah. do but you better have a net for sure oh yeah yeah i definitely <laughs> fallback plan was important on this album <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure so how long did it take for you to sit down and say oh i've got the perfect title for this collection of music um i don't think in this situation for me it didn't happen that way wow um it's kind of been a project for sure that i've wanted since day one stepping into music you know this is when I look back now, I go, you know, this is exactly what I, I pictured when I thought 
go to Nashville and get a record deal. This was the product I, I thought of. Like, it's been well thought through. We're happy with the production. We're happy with the songwriting. Um, we're happy with the flow of the record. Um, just kind of everything, you know. So this whole deal kind of started right when, right before COVID, and then all through COVID. Um, so it kind of took as long as it did because of that, in a way. Um, and, and here we are now, and putting this thing out, and it's all worked out. I feel like everything was on its own time, the way it, on God's time, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. no, no time like it, you know. So um, we're super happy with it, man. It's, it's, it's great. I'm just happy it's out, and folks can go listen to it, and you know, put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this one over there, so, as they say. What listeners don't understand is that how when we go into the studio, there's many times that we have to hire musicians to come in. They don't understand that process. Yeah, so Nashville, that's kind of standard. Um, you know, in the industry, especially with the labels and stuff, you know, there is a group of network musicians that pretty much play on yep. most people's stuff, that you, especially the stuff you hear on radio or you know, some of these hotter artists. Um, that's a definite thing. Um, there, there, there are session musicians. Um, in my case, I've used both in this on this record. I did have 13 songs I took to Nashville to work with my producer, Jeff Huskins, who used to be Little Texas, now producing music, yeah. working at DMG, oh. working with all the big guys. Um, and then I also have three other songs on there um, that were recorded in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. And... So, uh, two of the songs, I, I, some of the songs I used my musicians, and, and the other I used local, uh, basically Charlotte musicians that kind of play in the network. And they play with me as well, just not my normal band guys. But yeah, dude, it's just, you know, it's getting it done however you got to get it done. Um, you know, with my deal, it's a little different. Some, some, some acts that may be let's use for instance the zach brown band right, right you know to give it that signature sound they're going to bring in certain guys that give it that sound from the band you know so that's kind of how that may may or may not work for some of the other artists oh my so. god and the relationships that you build up with these musicians because tamas stedman for me was was just so brilliant in the studio and now today he's making guitars for rock bands all across the country i just love right. the fact that the people that you invite into your studio are more than just musicians oh yeah man it, it, musicians i think get discounted as far as what they really are as far as talent wise yeah um, especially when you get to a level of trying to put out, you know, on a mainstream level, you know, these guys usually have been working in the industry for a long time and they like myself have figured out other ways to do other things so that they can still do music because they love it. Just like I do so much, you know, so you you make whatever do to, if you really want that to keep happening, you know, so it ain't just music. They know they, some of these guys, you know, there's, and honestly, there's a lot of contractors. I, yeah. I do that. I own a roofing business. There's a lot of contractors in it because it works hand in hand. So for me, it's worked out. I've, I've made relationships for music and my roofing business. So, <laughs> yeah, there's so much talent, man. There's so many things that these other these guys can do. And, and some are just will blow your mind what, what how their mind works and how smart they are when it comes to certain things. So. Do you ever wonder if uh, Hank Williams Sr. ever had a side job? Because I just don't want to believe that he was just the musician. Oh, yeah, and I think it's the time of his music was way different. You know, right. times were different. Um, that During that time, you know, it wasn't long after, Johnny Cash could just walk into a radio station and say, hey, please play my yep. record. Please play this yep. vinyl. Please play yep. this 33. You know, that, that ain't a thing. You can't do that no more. You, you got to grind. You know, you know, I'd say the Internet definitely was a great thing for independents, independent artists. Um, at the same time, it, it allows access to a lot of artists. So in the sense of flooding the, the industry, it kind of does in the sense of the internet because it gives access. But at the same time, it also opens up access to a lot of listeners for these for these guys. So. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's talk about the music. Let's break it down because I, I totally believe that the, the Carolina, uh, that Carolina came through you in a big way when you did the title track hit to the album because this is a Carolina classic. I felt like I was home while listening to it. Okay. Well, hey, tell me again. What, what title was it? Untucked. Untucked. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The title track to the album. Um, 
Yeah, that song came. It was written during COVID. Um, with some, I rewrote that. I was a writer on it. It's part of one of the sessions, you know, when we write in Nashville, and I, it was two of my buddies involved, and uh, it was, man. It, honestly, I think that subject came up like, how do I express, you know, the things I've experienced through music, relationships, and all this, and like, and I had this title idea of untucked in my head brought it to the table and the idea of this with the storyline ended up changing totally with the product you hear than what i originally had but it's still the the sense is there and honestly it's i like it it's probably one of my favorite tracks on the album so let let me ask you when, when you go through a change like that i i always preserve that moment i mean i i still have all of my books where i scratch things out and put things in and move things around and stuff like that because i don't want history to be lost right right yeah for sure i mean I, it, for me it, it's easy to do that and i just turn to music and write it and record it okay um so you know while, while this is a product i'm putting out for the world to hear and hopefully enjoy my stuff more it's it's also something for me to leave behind for my friends and family to go yeah i remember that point in time in his <laughs> life because the people that know me can listen to this record and go i've been through this with all of him you know all this through I've been through all this with him or they know what I'm hinting on or whatnot, you know? And, and that's the hard part is like taking those, you're writing about real life. And I, I'm not necessarily hard, but that's the tricky part about now I'm writing it to fulfill my expression. And then I want, I want it to be accepted by the mainstream media or, or a mass whole public. So it has to be relatable for everyone. Yeah. You know? So that's, that's the cool part about songwriting too, because I think we did a pretty good job, you know, if with some of these songs to make them resonate across audiences other than just relating to what's happened to me because this record is 100% me yeah you know yeah so. yeah well being a wedding dj for 32 years the song wonder woman dude i'm telling you this is a first dance song oh yeah we that was me and my bu- local local charlotte area guy my buddy artist josh fosdick we wrote that during covid on a whim trip we just decided let's go to nashville for the weekend and get away from what we were we don't we do some contracting work together as well so we were like burn out and beat from that and we're like <laughs> get away and we got permission from our households and we went to Nashville and hung out with our buddies and ended up writing that song in downtown Nashville overlooking the city. So in American Dreamer, were you were you channeling Tom Petty? Um, it's funny you said that. Actually in the writing room in two thousand nineteen when we were writing that March two thousand nineteen. Um one of the one of my buddies who's a writer on that, um, his he was he was talking about Springsteen or John oh, Cougar Mellencamp wow. that sound so yeah, yeah. um that's it 100 that Tom Petty that Americana sound you know the the Springsteen that that era of music is definitely some of that sound mixed with everything you've heard since then you know and then you just throw that country vocal of mine on there and I feel like it makes my record sound great. You know, <laughs> so it, it, fit, it rounded mine out with that song, you know, for sure. I totally agree with you. This, this is one of those songs that will, will stand up and say, hey, look, you need to be, uh, you know, invited to a farm fest or some sort of festival up in Wisconsin, you know, j- just so that you know, people understand that you are in touch with the with the beat of the land. Sure. And, and another cool thing about that one, American Dreamer, um, we just dropped the video on that one uh, Friday with the album um it's on youtube right now we did an exclusive premiere with the south carolina national guard oh my um, God. who's we got to film it at mcintyre joint air base in hopkins south carolina so there's a lot of and there's a lot of people in this video we we did some farm locations you know just people that i know that wanted to be involved and local uh hunger heroes uh, foundation, nonprofit foundation that feeds our first responders and and, and our veterans and active duty military and stuff and uh, their their part. You know, there's just so much involved with the video and, and it's it's been going great so far for us now and um, we're that that video is definitely going to we're using Aristo in Nashville for distribution on that to try to get it to mainstream. You know, it's going to go it's going to go to TV. I'm not exactly yeah. sure who's going to pick it up, but. We'll, we'll probably have some of the others that's worked with us before Eric, well, and stuff like that. You, you got to be like Morgan Wallen and get your own iced tea, dude. 
Dude, I know, right? Come on. <laughs> hey, listen, my, one of my longtime best friends and, and bandmates, buddies, uh, Chris Gladden plays in his band, got that job a couple, I guess a couple years ago now, but I've heard so much about that and how great that camp is. It's funny you said Wallen because I do have a slight connection. I don't know Wallen personally, but I know some of the band guys. And like I said, one of my best friends plays for him. And, yeah, that's a, that's a good deal he's got going for him over there. So, Oh, my God, dude. Every night, because I'm in customer service at Harris Teeter. So, therefore, you know, I have my Morgan Wallen every night at 8 o'clock. And it's like, I want my Matt Tucker 8 o'clock every night. Give me some good there sweet go. tea from the South. Yes, sir. Please. <laughs> <laughs> we can make it happen. We call it American Dreamer Tea. You know? <laughs> It'll be like Michael's Magic Juice in the Space Jam movies. It's American Dreamer. It's sweet tea. <laughs> so do you use a song like Tiny Town as being the anchor of this collection of music? Because there's so much here that I did not know about when you and I first got together to talk about Tiny Town. Sure. Um, Tiny Town was kind of the first deal with the with this collection of songs um i had these songs pretty much done i've been sitting on them for a while of course we do some polishing with mastering and stuff beforehand but as far as the song being able to be heard and be pitched it, they, they've been done for you know a little while and um there's a show on outdoor channel that's called renovation hunters and um i know one of the hosts and i've known him for a while and he kind of approached me i was doing an event for him when they were starting this show uh, a couple years back and they needed a theme song and i said listen i got a, i got some stuff that might fit that's already recorded they heard tiny towns in the rough mix state and he said dude that's that's the song yeah i need that song yep. for the show i was like well go for it it's yours you know so you know that that was already getting played you know that helped us because um once they started once the show started catching on people started looking for the song like where did this song come from that's a cool song for the theme you know, um, so that helped for sure. And, and hopefully that just keeps growing and right. helping us out even more. But yeah, it's awesome how a lot of this stuff, ha a lot of these songs have some type of connection to something else to draw people into the record. Yep. And that was big for me. And, and, and it all worked out great. Like I said, it's just definitely a God sin, God timing thing for me. Um, I feel like, and just super excited, man. We're just I just hope people listen to it and love it. And if they don't, I hope they talk about it anyway, because that's <laughs> that's going to make somebody else go listen, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I can totally see you driving from, let's say, Rock Hill to Columbia on, on, on 77 with the song Overdrive, or you're doing 74 into Gaston County. Where were you at when you did Overdrive? Because that's a great highway song. <laughs> Funny. Uh, so I wrote Overdrive during covid i was i was living in charlotte uh, me and my fiance and honestly man i remember this distinctly um i was doing a lot of writing at time at the time at home because it, it's this was during the heavy covid restriction period yep. like we weren't even supposed to have so many people at our houses at the time you know <laughs> and of course we were because we're we're rebel country artists you know at the time i was 100 percent just nothing you know we were we were 150 shows a year with the band so it went from like constant go 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 to nothing so you know my mind's just racing and going crazy and overdrive man honestly i was playing some on my acoustic writing one night and this little the da 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 that little bouncy riff <laughs> yep, part yep, came yep. to my head and, and then i just started putting lyrics to it and then I remember Morgan, my fiance. She goes, "That's catchy," and she loves like R&B and hip hop. She's a country girl. She loves country, but like when she's by herself, she listens to Boom Boom. You know, yep, <laughs> so, absolutely. And she's like, "That's got a hip hop vibe to it." And I was like, "Hold on, we'll, I'll tell you what. We're gonna put some hip hop lyrics, throw some rock behind it, and put a country voice on it, and see what happens." Wow. <laughs> so that's how we got it. Well, you know that Boom Boom has headed toward you guys because I mean, look at Beyonce now, and you sit back going, "Oh." Hey. Oh, oh, I love it, but am I supposed to like it? Right. Well, I, I tell you what, there's a lot of controversy on that track, but it's a good sound of track, man. It's a good song. Yep. I don't have a problem with it. I mean, in my opinion, and when somebody asks me what kind of music do I do, I just, I do music. I'm a songwriter. I consider myself, especially nowadays, the more and more I get into the writing and production part, I love the songwriting part. I love the creation of that message that hits people. Yep. So, like, I 
I pride myself on it a lot more anymore, I'm, and, I, and I plan to do nothing but get try to get better at it. So, you know, listen to it, I'm like, when somebody asks me, hey, what do you think about this song, and what kind of music are you? And I'm like, I'm music, man. Like, I just, I listen to everything. I know what my voice fits yeah. as far as yeah. when I need to sing it. But for writing, dude, I feel like I can write across the board. It's just music to yeah. me. Yep. You know, so... Oh my God! Because that's what I, that's what I think. So. I still remember the days when my mom and dad were so upset when Hank Williams Jr. came to Billings, Montana, and they were going, "He doesn't sing like his daddy." And I'm going, "It's not your music. Why were you even right. there?" <laughs> right. Well, it's, it's happened throughout my life hearing the same thing, you know. And and and, and, it, and honestly, early in my career, I struggled with that. That was constantly like, I'm one of those people. Once I hear something, whether it's like well-known everybody knows that so-and-so is saying this about whatever but once i hear something that bothers me it sticks in my head <laughs> so you know i was always self-conscious about man i hope the old the old school cast are gonna like this song and then finally you know like with this record is it coming up we're getting closer and closer to try to do something with it. i'm like man you know what i love this album it's mine you know like i did all this these are my creations along with everybody involved i don't care what you know, somebody born in the sixties, one person says, Well, that ain't blah 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 music and I'm right. like No, it's you're right, it's not. It's two thousand twenty four and it's Matt Tucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this is me. If you don't like it, no offense, go on. <laughs> go do yours. And, and I'll tell you what, I won't tell you the next time I don't like it when you're burning leaves in your yard. How about that? <laughs> so when you put so, together I Miss You Girl, did you envision that your live audience would put up their smartphones with the light on it? Because this this is definitely a true love song. Yeah, I miss you girl. Um Man, I wrote that after my dog died. That's <gasps> totally about my dog, one hundred percent. So listen to it, listen to it careful, because that one of that was when we were doing it in the studio. I remember the session guys going, "Yeah, it's a great song, man." And, and no offense, like I just thought it kind of sounded like every other love, love song until I got to the end, and you you pretty much said yeah. it was a dog, and I was like. And he said, and then I started tearing up. And I'm like, well, don't do that. It's a, it's a happy, sad song. <laughs> like, yeah. It's in remembrance of like my best friend, my, my dog I love so much forever. So that passed away. And that's what it was. She was a family dog and kids knew her and everybody knew her that knew me. You know, um, so now I've got Murphy. He, you'll see him in the American <laughs> Dreamer video. So, you know, since then. But when I wrote, honestly, when I wrote the song, it was... I, I barely could sing it writing it because wow. it was it was tearing me up and I'm like where are these where is this coming from how am I writing these why am I writing about this and why does it feel like I need to keep going because this sucks I'm crying right now yeah. you know <laughs> but the more and more I live with it I'm like yeah this definitely I want this on the album because that dog was very special Cammy was very big in my life through through the time she was here so I just felt like you know and f that was more of a for me for that was for me and I know for sure that the people that knew me with her, with that dog, knows exactly what the reason I put it out. So Yeah, but you know what, though, Matt, is it, that everybody can relate with that. We've all been in that position, and, and I love my dog as well. And my wife knows that I love my dog more than I probably love her, but I'm still we're still together 32 <laughs> years. So when we hear a song like this, I mean, it really, I mean, it dug uh, into my soul. Yeah, well, I, that's... Not not me trying to make everybody cry, man. It's just me expressing, <laughs> hey, this was important to me, and maybe it is to you. And if you like it, I hope you share it with somebody else. Because like, I don't. You know, another thing is there hadn't been a dog song in country music in in, in a while. And then and I put this out, and then I chase her. I just got. I'm like, everybody had the same idea at the same time, didn't they? We all decided, hey, we better put a dog. There's just a few dog songs out, and I'm like, oh, how about that? Everybody had the same idea. <laughs> oh, oh my so, God! You know, Stonewall Jackson, me and you and a dog named boo man i grew up on that Dude, song <laughs> i know man there are some great dog songs i was like maybe there's maybe there needs to be one more if anything it's going to be my dog's song on my album and here you go i hope you like it you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so how do you prepare to take a song to a live stage such as remember living you know i've honestly i've i have played that a couple times really? um and it it goes over well man honestly like I feel like those songs are easier to play, um, you know, given the situation. You don't want to, if you're playing Friends in Low Places at 12 o'clock at a country bar <laughs> with rowdy beer drinkers, I'm not going to bust out a Michigan girl in the middle of it. I'm going to pick the right time of the night. Mm -hmm. But 
you know, that one, I'm sorry, not a miss. You remember living. Um, but yeah, that one just, I think that one came to us. I came with that idea. Like, Hey, you know, people go through rocky spots in their life of relationships. And, and obviously at the time I was in one Rocky and I said, what about just remembering what brought you together? Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of nineties influences, but there are quite a few Alan Jackson puns to this record. That song has one, um, but it's got that feel, that vibe of like what he would write as a love song to me, you know, like, so that one just, yeah, it was an idea and we wrote it. <laughs> and I felt like I'm like, this, this could really be a great love song in yeah, I've I've busted it out on stage and it gets a good reaction. Um and honestly, I don't know much else about the feedback on it because a lot of people were like, I didn't even know you had that song. Right. You know, until they started releasing the record. When I released it on the record, they're like, Dude, I've never heard that. I'm like, Yeah. But you know, to me I'm like, there needs to be some songs that nobody's quote unquote heard. Mm-hmm. If they're even even the close ones, the closest people to me, like I need to have some surprises here on this album to make to draw people in mm-hmm. instead of going, yeah, I've heard that. I'm not going to pull it up. No, I need you to. I need you to stream it because it looks – I need them numbers. I need you to stream it. So <laughs> what, what can I do? So surprise, let's, let's put bonus tracks and tracks they never heard on here. So <laughs> Oh, I won't be shocked. You some huge numbers on what I call a Bon Jovi meets Brad Paisley moment, and that's my kind of time. Yeah, uh, cool, man. I, I haven't heard that, but I like that. Um, I've heard Luke Bryan. I've heard, um, actually, I've heard a lot of people compare it to like Luke Bryan. Yeah. Um, which I'm fine with. I I love the song. Another one. This whole, uh, like I said, this album was written during COVID for the most part. Uh, and this is another one sitting in the kitchen, can't go nowhere. I'm trying to express to her how much I care about her. And here we go. Um, <laughs> just, just more, I guess. Um, just cool little what do you call them puns i guess where i'm talking about bonnie and clyde and then we go into this uh breakdown of like halftime which is a lot of people are really liking hardy nowadays so it's got it's got that little hardy halftime vibe in it but then again it goes right back to just country rock and then yeah man that's a great one that one's been out for a little while when we got a video out on it and i just that was like yeah well this has to be on the album because it done well when we first put it out so Wow. Man, I could talk to you all night. Where can people go to find out more about you, to get you booked inside their clubs and arenas? I mean, because they, they need to know about your journey and to experience that show. For sure. Well, the easiest would be matttuckermusic.com. Um, there's contact forms there. You know, all the social links, media, um, uh, music, videos, you name it, you can get to me through my website, matttuckermusic.com. Um, I'm on all the social platforms, and again, you can find those on my website. Um, if you got one, if you Google Matt Tucker Music, I'll come up pretty pretty quick, um, yeah. and, and it's pretty easy to get in touch with me. So yeah, just Google me, ask Google, ask Siri, ask Amazon. You know, if you, if you got a smart device that'll talk back to you, you can probably ask him about Matt Tucker. <laughs> so. You know, we got to do this again. You know, the show, the door is always open for you. You can come back anytime you want to, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate your time, buddy. And uh, you know what? And I will be back soon. We, we go, hopefully we have a lot more to talk about. So let's just, <laughs> let's just plan on it. How about that? <laughs> love it. Well, you be brilliant tonight. All right, guy. All right, brother. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.